Hey guys, it's Friday. I'm complete toast, but I wanted to uh, to show you the third cut on these bow ties. Uh, if we take a quick look, I think the liquid pattern is a little bit less. But you know, I may have I may have sprayed a little bit less dikem. We still got a nice splatter all the way around the chamber. Let's take a look at the bore. Okay, not a lot on the bore, and we do have some speckling action on this side. Move this light. Not a lot on this side. Okay, I'm going to venture to say that's the, the best pattern we've gotten so far on the valve. Now, if you take a good look at the valve, let's see if we can get a focus on that. I did do the seat and the back cut because they were a little raggy looking I noticed so I figured uh, I as well tune them up okay we still got a nice wide patch on the bowl that still looks good to me I'm pretty happy with that we got a, we got a good good angle on that I like it now this is the third cut this is about the time when I start making uh, losses in the mid-range to gain more top end and depending upon the application that's fine now this is probably going to be used in a street application so I do want to keep the mid-range pretty good we used uh, I haven't touched the exhaust it's the exact same exhaust port with three different shaped valves at this point so this valve is that plain Jane valve we showed last time all right it is neck down but it's just a 45 and it's got a sharp edge. I do see some splattering of dicom on it. Okay, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that the uh, roof has a different texture. And the reason I did a different texture was because I needed to start measuring how thick everything is and the finer texture makes it a little bit easier for the sonic okay looking right down its throat we got a nice we got a nice mark as far as how deep in the bowl that dicum is going okay we can also see we got we got a nice hit on that short side radius with some dicum because the the short side radius is very tall on this so tall that i dug out my 492 fuelies and measured how much distance I have from the short side to the roof. Well, 492s have quite a bit more area from the short side to the roof area. I should say distance. It measures much higher because the 492s have a much lower short side radius than these. So I did, oh, I did, uh, I did work on the roof a bit according to uh, our speeds trying to uh, trying to make it more efficient I did do a little bit of work on the short side radius let's take a peek at that okay let's see if we can do our focus come on you can do it a little tough to see but the short side did get some work I don't know if we can get that or not guys uh, and the short side does work better than it did but it's still, it's still starting to separate before we get to our 567 lift, which is where the, this cam has been running on the Chevelle. Okay, an important point to make is I started this test and it was already hot, 83 degrees. By the time I made a mistake over here and had to retest and did everything and did my numbers, it was 94 degrees in here. Okay, so as far as those exhaust numbers, I bet if I flowed them on a cooler, a cool, cooler garage day, they'd go up a couple CFM. All right, guys. So this is where we were. This was second cut, and uh, some of the important numbers. We did really well at 300. 213 which is not bad at all okay 
Okay, we went down to 208. All right, that test started at 82, so that was a hot day too. Okay, so I'm not gonna blame that on uh, the hot garage. That's what happens when I start going for the higher lift flows. Okay, so I was expecting to lose a bit in the mid-range, and I definitely did, right? We got minus, plus, plus, minus, 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 plus at 500, 286, at 0.567, we're 284, but it's, see, it's already losing it over the short side radius. See how it went down? And then after 600, uh, 600 we got 284, 290, 290, a little bit more than 290. Okay. So is it a win? I don't know. You got to remember, I took a little, I took, I raised that roof a little bit. So this is a little bit bigger port than this one. Yeah, it definitely tops out better. We're going from 283 and change to 290. All right, so we got almost seven. Okay, how'd we do on the swirl? Plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, minus, minus. I actually like this swirl, swirl curve a little better. I'll look at the wrong one. This is down a little bit. But it gets too high over here. This is way high. We're not going to lift over there, so it doesn't matter. Right around where we're going to lift, 1975 is actually about perfect. Ooh, over here, this swirl was too much, 2755. That's an important, that's a very important piece right there. Okay. How do we do on the exhaust? Now, the exhaust, like I said, is the exact same exhaust. I haven't touched it. The only thing I did to this exhaust was I did the seat, and I did a radius... Uh, on that lower cut and you can see it still has a, a burr finish on on that i did not polish that okay the burr finish will lose you if you see fm okay minus 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 and by the time we're 200 we're up almost everywhere almost all of these are up a couple are down and when i say down they're down like a tenth Okay, so the regular standard shape valve is definitely a winner on this. Now our air speeds are a little nutty. Okay, so this was taken at 567. It was flowing 278. That's what we got for speeds. Here we're flowing 284. But notice how much more they went up. Up, up, lost a little bit on the floor, but only two. Okay. Roof speeds. Both roof speeds went up. Now, if you raise the roof, you're giving it more area. You would expect it to slow down, but it didn't. So that's kind of interesting, right? And the short side radius got some work because I'm not happy with the speed here. These aren't too bad. They're relatively even, right? But we're just way fast in the center. So, we did some work on that. And we went up there, down there, and down there. It's slightly more efficient. Not a huge step, though. And as far as the speeds on our exhaust. Now, this was the valve that was uh, tulip-shaped. I made, like, a tulip shape on it, right? And it looks, it's fast, 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 except that one spot, and this, this corner is a little slow. Left corner is a little slow. If you look at this, this looks like a loser, but at 0.56, this one was flowing 200.1, and this one was flowing 198.2. So it was flowing a little bit more, but we look like we have slower air speeds everywhere but our dead spot. Our dead spot picked up. Now, 
that's very strange. I don't know. That I wonder if. Well, you got to remember. By this time, it was hot, really hot. So I wonder if the heat changes our air speeds at all. I don't know. That's an interesting. That's an interesting experiment in itself. Flow something. I can flow something in the afternoon when it's hot, and then just leave it on the bench and flow it again, and do my air speeds again and see if they change when it's cool. All right, guys. I think I bored you enough with my blah 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 flows. I think uh, I think we're gonna let this sit. We just got uh, new valves for the W2 project, at least intake valves. So I'd like to see how those work. I'm surprised they didn't get the intakes and the exhaust the same same uh, same time. But can't think of anything else. So guys, have a good weekend, will you? I know I could use a good weekend. Thanks for hanging out.